Hey there, you know it's Sunday and it's time for me to do some sort of uh, live video. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple things I just want to say. This afternoon was a pretty cool afternoon for sports. Kurt Busch won the uh, Daytona uh, 500. It was pretty exciting, especially that last match. And then Ricky Fowler uh, won the Honda Classic. Wow, that was another great couple hour afternoon. It was, it was sort of nice, cool outside, but it was worthwhile watching those sports. So that was pretty cool. What I want to talk about uh, today was on Friday, I was uh, out with a customer, and uh, they wanted to go look at a home at 6.30 at night. And so what I usually do is, at this, in the market that we're in right now, is I'll send the other realtor to find out, I'll send them an email and find out if there's any offers on the property before we go out. Um, sometimes uh, buyers don't want to look at a home if there's already offers on it, or if they're in multiple offers. So I called him, and he said they were presenting an offer at 4 o'clock. Now, we're going at 6.30 at night, all right? And when we got there, there was another group of people um, there looking at the home. Um, so it's the, the kind of thing I really want to discuss is that should that seller take that offer at 4 o'clock or wait for other offers to come in? And um, that's going to be based on what is in the offer, so we're going to talk about nine different things that go into an offer. And whenever I have multiple offers or whenever I have an offer as representing the seller, these are the nine things that we talk about. And then I compare for multiple offers, I put them up next to each other. Because it's not always the, the best price is what gets the offer or gets the home. So here's, here's the top nine things that are pretty much in order that we go through. So the first thing is, who is the other realtor? Who is the realtor that wrote the offer? Um, and I've been in the business for 16 years. Um, I know a variety of companies, um, which one, in my eyes, are credible. Some are not. Uh, not I don't want to say some are not. Some that I just haven't heard. Um, but if there's somebody that I'm working with that I've done business with in the, in the past, that makes a big difference. Um, so that's one thing. Who is the realtor and who do they work for? What's the company? The second thing is, and one of the most important thing is, who is the lender? Who's bringing in, who's, who are they getting their financing from? Now, remember, I'm representing the seller, but this also has to do with the buyer on both sides. Who's the lender? You want to have a good, reputable lender. Um, there are some lenders, for a while there, were getting a lot of online lenders, and um, we never knew whether the money was going to come in. And in the past, we had some other shady uh, lenders. So a good, reputable lender, a local lender of some sort, is one that we really, really like when you're taking an offer. The third thing is, is how much is the earnest money that you're putting down? Now, let's say that somebody, let's use a hypothetical number, like $250,000 house. Somebody gives you a $250,000 offer, full price offer, but they're only going to give you $1,000 down. Somebody else comes in and says, we're going to give you $5,000 down, but we're going to offer you $5,000 under the asking price. Which one do you take? Good question. That's part of the rest of the questions that we need to go through. The standard procedure is one percent, one to two percent of the uh, of the sale price is what you want to offer. You want to put down as earnest money. But the more you put down, the better the offer looks because the seller is saying, "Is a skin in the game? How much skin is in the game?" The second thing is, is whether it's refundable or non-refundable. There, in most cases, it is refundable unless something um, bad happens, something like uh, somebody loses their job or some other things that can happen. The third thing is, is what type of loan is it? Is it an FHA loan? Is it a conventional loan? Is it a VA loan? VA loan, you have to pay for some of their closing costs, no matter what. Um, an FHA loan, they only need to put 3.5% down. A conventional loan, they got to put 5% down, 10%, and 20% is obviously the best that they go down. So now, here's the variables again, right? You're looking at an offer. Somebody's got a, a full price offer putting 3.5% down, and somebody's coming in with a $5,000 under the asking price, two forty five, dollars and they're putting 20% down. Who do you want to give the, the house to? Who do you want it to go to? So let's see how the variables, we're always working with variables. The second thing, the, la the other thing I was just talking about is what's the down payment? That's the other thing. And then now we get to the offer. I know it's sort of funny, but we've walked through all these other things, and now we're getting to the offer. How much is the offer? Is it full price? Is it underpriced? Is it overpriced? Uh, the thing you need uh, to check with is on the first weekend, and if we're in this kind of market, if you go under the asking price, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit of a slap in the face. Um, it shouldn't be, but some realtors that represent the seller feels that that, that isn't something that should happen. The next thing is is, is, is there an inspection? Now, what we did is we put an offer in last week on a house. Uh, everything was pretty close to the same thing, except for they didn't do an inspection, and that that's good for the seller. However, the seller thinks 
that by not doing an inspection, they're not liable, but actually they really are. If they weren't telling the truth in the disclosure statement, they still can be liable for it. So if they lived in the house and they didn't tell what was going on in the house um, without an inspection, I, you know what, it's always up to the courts, but you still need to be truthful. Another thing is, are you offering a home warranty? Are you asking for a home warranty? Home warranty is anywhere from five to seven hundred dollars. Um, home warranty is pretty good, and we'll be getting into that subject a little later. That's not a make or break de deal. That's usually a surplus deal. That's a, it's something that you throw in there. Another thing is the closing date. Uh, number nine is the closing date, and um, is the closing date open? Is it best for the seller or is it best for the buyer? Now remember, if you're trying to get that house, you want to make it as good as you can for the buy for the seller. So what I do a lot of times is I leave the, try and leave the closing date open. I I don't know. I've always found in the past that that's worth five to ten thousand dollars value for the buyer. Now the seller might say I don't really care, so that isn't a variable at all. And the tenth thing is, are are you asking to pay for closing costs? Now closing costs can be three to five percent. So on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, you're looking at um, seventy five hundred dollars. Um, so you're going to ask the seller, are they asking the seller to pay $7,500? So if you're getting a full price offer of $250,000 and then they're asking for $7,500 off, what is that? Two forty-seven five dollars is what you're, they're not really giving you a full price offer because they're asking you to cover closing costs. So those are 10 variables. So the thing is, is on that Friday night, if you walk in to, with that seller, if you walk in with that seller and you say, hey, listen, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I have a... I have an offer coming in, um, I have a good offer, are you willing to take it? If it meets these 10 criteria, um, are you going to take it or are you not going to take it? Um, now, do you want to wait over the weekend or do you want to, um, and if you do, you have the risk of losing a good buyer. Now, remember, a good buyer can go and buy a house somewhere else if they're given 20% down and they're putting 5000 or $10,000 down if they have an open closing date. So sometimes you need to take that offer, that first offer, and... Um, um, sometimes you don't, um, but I usually recommend if it's a good offer that you take the good offer um, and then you move on and um, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. This is Pat Markfort. Uh, if you have any friends or family that are looking to, to either buy a home or sell a home, please uh, give me a call. My phone number is 651-428-8871. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.